Hello, good morning. I hope we're all doing fine today. So this is going to be another unscripted live screenshot vlogging. And as you can see, I've uh, already pulled up Twitter. And uh, the trending right now are China. And uh, of course, uh, coronavirus is still dominating uh, the airwaves, including the internet. The reason why China is trending is because of a lot of reasons. So one is... China lied, people died, uh, they started, not really started, but coronavirus started in China, they ignored it, Chinese officials or Chinese Communist Party uh, arrested or tried to arrest people who were first whistleblowers of the coronavirus outbreak in Wuhan province of Hubei. Back in November, I think according to reports, uh, way back September and November, a few doctors, most of them were ophthalmologists, okay? I'm gonna, you know, discuss or present them after this, but these doctors were first whistleblowers, okay, of the coronavirus outbreak in China. It's a it's the city of Wuhan. This is, you know, an industrial city in China. They have this uh, research facility where they conducted biochemical uh, studies or uh, lab testing. We all know that Chinese government placed the city of Wuhan on a lockdown for uh, two months already. A few days ago, if I'm not mistaken, they relaxed the lockdown restriction but yesterday there were riots in some parts of Wuhan and probably in Hubei because despite the fact that the lockdown was eased or somehow relaxed people from that city were still not allowed to travel outside of the city so that's the reason why a lot of people were like uh, rioting and protesting and here's a video this reminds me of our situation so that city was on a lockdown not the whole country of china was in lockdown in fact political center or heart of china beijing was protected okay they just have a few cases i think four cases of coronavirus and all of these cases were imported from the outside so there you can see you know the politics in china so while the chinese government the chinese communist officials and their minions local minions were like arresting the early whistleblowers okay the whistleblowers were the one who uh exposed or somehow alerted they they had the you know the best intention at heart so this is going to be the focus of our discussion so it's revealed or exposed that probably millions of masks from hospitals including test kits from china were found to be defective and as you can see here the government of netherlands decided to recall 600,000 masks from hospital for being defective after being purchased from china so a lot of people are so angry because uh, as you can see this crisis originated from China. That's the reason why the COVID, the, the, the term COVID means China originated viral and infectious disease in 2019. So that's the meaning of COVID to me. Apart from that, the Philippines seems to have, ex to have been exposed to this shenanigans by uh, the Chinese. All right, I'm not creating hate against the Chinese, but we're just discussing reality here. The re reality is China lied and it continues to lie and it's also lying probably about the death or the number of deaths of its people because a lot of people in the united states especially those haters of our president donald trump because america is now uh it has the highest number of coronavirus cases for uh 120,000 cases all right with uh the biggest number of cases in uh, a few democratic states the democratic states for example uh new york which has like 50 to 60 thousand cases uh new jersey massachusetts california so all of these are democrat states and 
most of the voters in those states hate and hate President Donald Trump. But that's going to be another story. So, all right. So as we can see here, the DOH, you know, um, made an apology just today, according to reports. Okay. So uh, this is a tweet from ABS CBN News. It's, I'm going to read it. DOH apologized, says again, this time for the confusion over the supposed defective COVID-19 test kits from China. All right, so I'm going to discuss as well the president of the Philippines, uh, which or who is a useful idiot. He's a useful idiot. He's useful to Xi, the leader of the Chinese people or the Communist Party leader. leader. And uh, all right, so let's read this uh, some kind of apology from the DOH today. So as you can see here, March 29, 2020 at 12 noon. So it's already 4.20 in the afternoon. So this was uh, posted or published or printed four hours ago. So it read, the Department of Health wishes to clarify that the initial 2,000 BGI RT-PCR test kits and the 100,000 Sanshur RT-PCR test kits donated by the Chinese government have been assessed by the Research Institute, Institute for Tropical Medicine to be at par with the test kits provided by the World Health Organization after parallel testing were done. Moreover, Sanshur test kits contain all, all required reagents to run the test successfully. The DOH apologizes for any confusion that previously issued statements have costs so i responded to this tweet i said here this is my twitter handle Thosum awesome looks like we filipinos have been multiple crossed not double crossed by china china lied people died and then it acted or china acted like our savior the filipino savior and our useful idiot press president the third day praised uh, Xi Jinping virus for it, or Xi Jinping. The third day double crossed Filipinos by being a sellout and incompetent. All right, so what the hell I had to drag the name of President the third day here. So, Karen Davila is, is spot on here uh, by tweeting that I'm not sure which is worse the DOH making this kind of mistake at a crucial time like this. Or the government possibly just not wanting to offend China. So in the case of Netherlands, okay, Netherlands had this, you know, courage to recall all of these masks they purchased from China because all of them were defective. So if they, if China, okay, produce defective masks, how much more? with caskets. Yesterday, the U.S. government intercepted thousands upon thousands of fake or bogus caskets. We don't know where these caskets were manufactured. It was probably manufactured in China. Let me just check here. Fake caskets, U.S. intercepted. All right, so, all right, CBP intercepts first package of counterfeit COVID-19 test kits. Here's the news. So we have news from ABC and a lot of a lot of establishments. So yesterday was when I read this, but there's been ongoing shipment of fake or bogus test kits over the past weeks, as we can see here. So we don't know where these test kits were manufactured. Probably the best guess that we can have is China. And did we get some bogus or okay it's good to say that well probably we got defective but not bogus or face test kits from the chinese manufacturers but just to show you that you know fake test kits are in the markets as we all know today let's get to mr duterte duterte uh like i said in my tweet double cross the philippines well, let me just discuss this with you at length you know uh, my fellow filipinos 
All right, the third day heavily invested on China. He borrowed billions of dollars from the Chinese uh, while angering or distancing our country from our traditional allies, the United States and the West. So although Duterte was just mad at former President Obama, when the new president came in, President Trump, that's when he stayed a bit quiet and somehow civil. But regardless, looks like Trump doesn't like Duterte based on his mannerism, based on his and how he acted when he visited the Philippines. And he never invited President Duterte. Trump never invited President Duterte. Uh, he never spoke to him after that. In fact, President Trump would like to establish a strong relationship with India while trying to dis distance uh, America's relations from China. Duterte heavily invested on China or relied on China. What I mean by investing is that uh, it, he compromised our economy with China. A lot of Chinese investors came in and we don't know if they're paying taxes. A lot of workers from China also came in and that's probably the reason why uh, the coronavirus uh, cases that we have today, it's just 1,000 plus today, 1,000 plus from 700 plus two days ago. It could be higher than that because we've been exposed to Chinese, Chinese tourists over the past two years, right? past two years and that's how Italy was exposed to the Chinese virus through tourists and uh, returning tourists from China and returning uh, nationals from China. So needless to say that the 30s is definitely a puppet of China in Asia and he's been you know a good ass leaker of uh, Xi Jinping over the past two years and because of that uh, Xi Jinping decided to loan us billions of dollars but Mahathir Mohammed warned the Philippines last year or probably two years ago that Chinese loan is a poison. Chinese loan is a poison. Wherever China loaned its political money or its Chinese buying friends from all, all over the world basically in in Africa in Latin America for example a lot of countries were were uh, devastated and in Africa, for example, Zimbabwe, um, you know, China had to overthrow uh, the president of Zimbabwe, Mugabe, because of Mugabe's anti, you know, anti foreign, anti Chinese, anti foreigner uh, policies uh, last year. So the third thing is definitely an ass leaker of Xi Jinping and we don't know what will happen to the Philippines after this. We exposed our economy uh, significantly to China. We are relying on China. And um, that reliance cannot be cut off right away without hurting our economy. So what, happen, what will happen after this? A lot of countries are now mad at China. Australia, for example, is so mad at China because Australian people, the media reported recently that uh, the Chinese government purchased millions and millions of medical supplies from Australia in January and February while they were lying about the outbreak along with WHO. China lied about the outbreak. China said no, we don't have, there's no coronavirus outbreak and WHO as well in, in January uh, defended China by saying no, coronavirus can be, the, the virus cannot be transmitted to humans. But then during that you know, month in, uh, until February, China was purchasing millions of, and millions of medical supplies like face masks from Australia and shipping them back to China. Credit to the Herald for breaking what is a huge story in this pandemic with the allegations the Chinese government has spent the last few months shipping Australian medical supplies back to China. Um, unforgivable, Liz Dora. I would have thought unforgivable. That's the reason why Australians are very mad. Netherlands as well are so mad. They just recalled 600,000 um, face masks uh, that they purchased from the Chinese. So what will happen after this? China will be considered a person and non grata uh, in the world. And that's going to be totally uh, negatively imp impacting the economy of China and 
in the Philippines in our case since we exposed our economy significantly to China we're gonna bear the you know the consequence of that just because of the 30 so here I just pulled up the video of the 30 praising the Chinese leader Xi Jinping okay in this video but let's just listen to his to his uh, grateful statement or message to uh, Xi Jinping but China you know President Xi Jinping for all of his goodness to us wrote goodness. me a letter and said that he is willing to help all we have to do is to ask ako ang tingin ko maybe there will be a time if things deteriorate that I have to call on China to help it Remember that this was posted on March 12th and the 30 is a useful idiot as he is the useful idiot as he is thank China for their fake philanthropism okay he said that they have managed the crisis very well really in this country and uh, he is uh, very much willing to help so to the Chinese government, to the people, especially to President Xi Jinping, thank you for the <laughs> consoling words and maybe uh, I hope it would not reach to that point, but maybe uh, we will need your help. Salamat po. Alright, our president is definitely a useful idiot. Uh, he's a cowardly man. Typical bully is someone who's gonna take on the weak, okay, the defenseless. But when faced with a strong bully, stronger bully, a bigger bully, is gonna act cowardly, like Duterte did in this video. So he's a coward leader uh, and incompetent at best as well. All right, so as we can see here, that's the president of the Philippines trying to be a good ass licker of Xi Jinping. It turned out that he's wrong as, because as we can see here, China lied and a lot of thousands of thousands upon thousands of people all over the world died because of China's lies. And China even tried to uh, point the blame or pin the blame on the Americans, but the President Trump, you know, was not was not willing to take all of it. Okay, so willing to to be you know the subject of the blame by China. That's, that's when he said or uh, made a viral term Chinese virus or Chinese coronavirus or China virus, and the media in the United States were like so mad at president trump for calling the virus chinese virus when the media the liberal fake news media in the united states were calling it the chinese coronavirus uh several days before trump did and do you think using the term chinese virus that puts asian americans at risk that people no, might target not at them? All. no not at all i think they probably uh would agree with it 100 percent. it comes from china the third day is also a moron here so stupid and gullible for believing the lies coming from the Chinese people or not really from the Chinese people I have nothing against the Chinese people the first victims of the Chinese I'm referring only to the Chinese government the, the first victims of the Chinese government is its very own people its very own citizens especially those living in the, the city of Wuhan and the province of of Hubei right they were the first victims right so before we get anywhere let's just cover the timeline um, showing how China lied to the world all right so there is a timeline collated by the media by this uh, publication or online publication live meant so this is how it started so i said probably september and um and um november but here they collated some details in december so for example on december 1st that's when 
the symptom onset date of the first patient it was identified in China. So uh, December 25th, Chinese medical staff in two hospitals in Wuhan were found to be suspected of contracting the viral pneumonia. And that's when whistleblower, uh, Dr. Li Wenliang, I mentioned about the whistleblower earlier, uh, he warned a group of other doctors about the possible outbreak of an illness that resembled severe or SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome. And because of that, he was arrested. He was forced to sign an apology by the Chinese police. All right, that's what happened to him. He died of the, the virus. We don't, but a lot of, you know, netizens all over the world were doubting that official pronouncement by the Chinese government that um, Li Wenliang died of the virus. Probably he was killed or executed for for alerting the government for you know doing his civil duty as a doctor he was arrested well that's the nature of socialist and communist governments china contacted the who in december and at the beginning of january that's when they issued summons or arrest warrant to li wenliang uh, by the Wuhan Public Security Bureau accusing the doctor of spreading rumors. January 3rd, Dr. Li signed a statement at the police station acknowledging his misdemeanor and promising not to commit further unlawful acts. So this guy is a hero. He's a martyr and he had this, you know, the world on his shoulder. Not, not literally, not probably the world, but the whole the whole, you know, country of China. It's, he's trying to, he's trying to, to do his civil duty, but he was persecuted by the communist government because the communist government would like to hide any negative, you know, any negative uh, event or negative uh, outbreak from the public because that's going to be not a good, uh, not a good publicity for the Chinese Communist Party. So. China's National Health Commission ordered institutions not to publish any information related to the unknown disease. So recently, China as well, just just before China started bragging to the world that they were able to contain the virus, with that the United States is now the high, has now the highest number of of coronavirus cases, and that China uh, has no longer China no longer has any uh, new cases of coronavirus. China let all journalists, foreign journalists go. So China forced out foreign journalists, including those who hate President Donald Trump from China, all right, so that China can manipulate the facts and so that it can only, you know, pollute the world with propaganda. All right, so on the same day, the Hubei Provincial Health Commission so this was on the three, uh, the fifth, January 3rd, so let's continue. January 8th, Chinese medical authorities claimed to have identified the virus, reiterating that still found no clear evidence of human-to-human -human transfer. And this was, this was repeated by the World Health Organization. So WHO is complicit. WHO must be blamed as well must share the share the blame well the reason why is who is getting billions and billions of dollars from china all right money talks so on january 11th wuhan health uh wuhan city health commission released q a sheet emphasizing the most that most of the unexplained viral pneumonia cases in wuhan have a history of exposure to the south China seafood market and no clear evidence of human to human transmission has been found so in January so in the middle of January they were like still lying that no uh, there's no evidence of human to human transmission yet so on January 13th the first case of novel coronavirus was reported outside China involving a 61 year old Chinese woman in Thailand who visited or had visited Wuhan. So this is the time. Let me just show you. 
on January 14th, this is a tweet from the World Health Organization. January 14th, the World Health, Health Organization on Twitter. It, this is uh, its official Twitter account. Preliminary investigation conducted by the Chinese authorities have found no clear evidence of human to human transmission of the novel coronavirus. So, WHO is simply repeating the lies of the Chinese government. So, another useful idiot. Okay. And uh, speaking of uh, Li Wenliang, here let me just show you. The Chinese government has monopolized lying within its territory. So just to give you an idea why that is. Okay, so here's... By the way, this is uh, Mr. Li Wenliang, the, the hero uh, of the Chinese people. Um, this is from the Twitter account, Infectious uh, Diseases. The hero heroism of Li Wenliang is fresh in the minds of many. He warned colleagues about the threat of what's now called COVID-19. He was seen as a whistleblower, summoned by the police and admonished. He, re he returned to work as a doctor and died from COVID-19. But a lot, like I said, a lot of people are still not believing that official statement but are from, coming from the Chinese government that died of COVID-19. So these are the other doctors who disappeared, either died, disappeared, or, or exiled for telling the truth about Wuhan coronavirus. And our president, I don't know where, where the president is getting his news from. He's probably getting it from People's Daily China or from the state-managed uh, publications and media from China. I don't know. Or probably directly from uh, Xi Jinping. But let me just show you that this is a bureaucratic uh, monopolized lie by the Chinese government. So Li Wenliang, for example, Getting back there, so there is this ambassador who lied about Li Wenliang. So this is a good interview. The difficult case of the young doctor Li Wenliang, who was the first person who actually alert people that there was something strange going on, a new virus that was worrying, was unknown. And the Chinese authorities sort of arrested him and gave him a notice of admonishment. Um, and they, they were very, very tough with him. And they said, if you are stubborn, refuse to repent, and continue to carry out illegal activities, you will be punished by the law. And then, sadly, he died. Do you think the Chinese state made a, made a mistake in that case? Uh, I would... Um, okay, listen to how this guy lied. So if you have this ambassadorship position from China, you must be good at lying and propaganda. That, because that's your only job to defend china at all costs okay that's how communist countries operated in the past like for example soviet russia that's the reason why the the biggest spies that they're um creating or uh they're appointing to power are you know getting all those ambassadorship positions including diplomatic positions right so this is a good example of how you know um, a Chinese ambassador who was trained to lie, who was trained to, to do propaganda or spread propaganda or uh, to dodge a question. He dodged a question here and he did it very masterfully. All right. This is how a communist propagandist lies. I would um, correct you here. It's not Chinese authorities, uh, it's a local. Uh, you know, uh, maybe local authority. That's bullshit. See, that's how he answered the question. Let me just correct you here. It's not the Chinese authorities. It's the local authorities. As if China is like the United States, that's the federal government. But in China, all laws are coming from the top tier of the, you know, the Communist Party. So they are all getting all, you know, their policies 
or commands from the highest position of the land. So Xi Jinping is like the god in China. Okay, so this guy is lying, but he lied masterfully that you know the interviewer he was fooled because he doesn't know the political structure of China or he, probably he missed that part well he, he could have said well China is a communist party and you have this very strict political structure a one party one system structure which means that all laws are governed by the central government so it's not like a federal government like the United States so we don't have local you know policy here and national policy there's just one policy that's how this interviewer should have attacked the statement or answer by this ambassador but this ambassador was so good at you know dodging the question and answering it in a way that the the interviewer was even caught off guard you may, yeah, uh, Chinese authority as a matter of fact uh, we have uh, the uh, supervision committee have sent investigation team down to Wuhan to find out what is what was really going on. Uh, people feel very sad. I tweet, you know. They found out what because by the end of December, that's when that's when they forced Li Wenliang to sign, you know. To sign an apology letter or to some kind of signing paper saying that he's wrong and he's apologizing and he's not gonna spread you know rumors again so this this guy is lying so the interviewer does not know anything about the timeline of events so it's as if probably to the interviewer um, he probably thought oh well the, the Chinese government did everything in the past but if we're gonna if we're gonna check on the timeline the Chinese government only acted when everything else was already exposed to the world and when the world already acted and when Donald Trump started banning travels from China. On my Twitter account, express my condolences and pay tribute to uh, Dr. Lee. But that's well, that's the best that you can do because the damage has been done and uh, Chinese government is trying to save it, uh, you know, its face now, and uh, a lot of a lot of people all over the world are dying because of this Chinese inaction. They lied. They tried to suppress the truth within Wuhan, and they arrested people who, you know, tried to alert the government to try to who tried to do their civic duty. That hey, you know, people are gonna die if we're not gonna do this. But the government said, oh fuck you. You know, don't spread rumors or else I'm going to arrest you and kill you. And that's what happened to Li Wenliang, including, you know, other whistleblowers in China. So let's just move on. So our president, Duterte, is a useful idiot. The World Health Organization is a useful idiot. The world media were all useful idiots as well. So it can be uh, evidenced by the f how they responded to Trump travel bans from travels uh, bans on travels from China and President Trump was uh, called a racist and xenophobe for that but it, it appears now that Trump is absolutely right so let's go back to the affairs in the Philippines so I'm trying to you know uh, speak as fast as I can here so the Atom Arroyo and the doctor <laughs> doctor uh, Apologies of the 30 doctor exchange yesterday. So I said, uh, this is apology from the DOH. So, and our government is lying as well, in, including their, their apologies, the the third tariff, the, the third tariff, for example. All right, so there was a heated discussion between Atom Arolio. I'm not a fan of this guy, but um he was able to point out the fact yesterday because he said in a tweet or probably not in a tweet but in a statement official statement that there were only 2000 tests tests made in the philippines but this doctor i'm trying to find his name this doctor tried to correct emotionally and he was so emotional when he tried to correct, you know, uh, Atom Morolio. 
that hey you're wrong there were actually more than 11,000 tests done so here's a doctor's name dr edsel Salvana. so he said in his tweet yesterday that uh in trying to correct adam atom or all you atom the 2147 tests is inaccurate okay it's not as simple as adding the covid track numbers so the actual tests performed is 11,466 so what this doctor is actually saying is okay we it's true that we did conduct 2147 individuals but the actual number of tests because there were repeat tests is 11,466 so basically yes the, the it's accurate 2147 individuals were tested but because of repeat tests okay because of repeat tests the number is actually 11,466 so what the hell does that mean does that mean that a lot of privileged people like senators senators uh, Coco Pimentel for example did we conduct multiple tests on them the wealthy people did we conduct multiple tests on them because they were using defective defective uh, test kits from China donated by China right makes sense right makes sense so and that's the reason why this this doctor is angry and I told him I, I told him in this tweet tweet when are you gonna apologize for trying to uh, confuse Filipinos I said in my tweet I'm not getting any response yet but probably I will um, after this because he's like spreading you know misinformation by saying that there were actually 11,000 tests done on 2,000 individuals <laughs> how stupid can you be to have that kind of thought process right so that's the reason why I said uh, this is my reply to him so when do Filipinos I think he blocked me when do Filipinos expect expect an apology or some kind of clarification given the new updates we have today sir but looks like yeah he already blocked me the doctor who I whom I call Dr. Moran blocked me already so good for me <laughs> I was blocked by Dr. Edsel Salvana is that his name Salvana yeah he blocked me for trying to point out the truth so let me just verify if he actually blocked me i can no longer see his tweet so yeah i'm actually blocked by edsel salvana <laughs> what is snowflake he did not even answer my question so my question is actually valid since he was claiming yesterday is is probably it's like shouting so emotional and angry and he's even playing the victim card you know when people try to fo point out the truth that only 2000 individual individuals were tested he he got mad he got mad and called those people telling lies when in fact it's actually true that 2000 people were tested but a lot of tests will, were done on them, them the, the number of tests were over 11,000 so a lot of fake news going on today so these Edsel Salvana blocked me for being a snowflake who couldn't handle the truth it's actually a badge of honor for me uh, for being black by this by this uh, the Turtard follower fanatic the Turtard all right so that's what we have today so our president is a useful idiot a lot of people Filipinos are gonna suffer from the consequences of President Duterte's failed economic policies and pro-China or China first policy. In the future, you, you'd probably think of Duterte as a useful idiot, a coward, a coward who's afraid of a real bully. And uh, as stood on going lockdown, it could be that uh, it's it might be extended 
And if it's going to be extended, that's going to be a death sentence to our economy. So one is we rely on, on China's economy, and China is losing confidence from all over the world because of the way China responded. The way China responded because China monopolized medical, uh, the manufacture of medical supplies in the world, including medicines. All right. So what first world countries, the developed countries, are going to do? Um, for example, America, Australia, and the UK, they're going to distance themselves from China. They're going to pull out all of this, you know, uh, manufacturing companies um, related to the manufacture of medicines and medical supplies from China. And that's going to hurt China so bad. And our economy is going to be impacted because our president compromised our economy with China. And uh, a lot of Filipino businesses are going to be affected as well. It's either they're going to lay off, lay off, you know, their workers, fire them, or they're just going to close. On a positive note, BPO industry is going to boom. It's going to thrive because the after this corona virus crisis is all over, it's going to create, you know, um, new demands in the BPO industry in the Philippines. It's going to create lots and lots of jobs but that's what we have today for today um this dr Adsel Salvana is is no flaky he got triggered by my, by my tweet and so he blocked me for that but kudos to me for simply asking the right question and i got blocked for you know simply pointing out the truth and this is again uncensored asian vlog if you like this video like i said please comment like share as well and subscribe okay have a good day and stay safe, uh, Filipinos.